from the bottom, model info. I'm going to click on that. Uh, it works best if we do our modeling in metric. Um, it matches a little bit easier with our, our 3D printers than when we do it in inches. So let's choose the 0.0, .0 millimeters and then with a precision of tenths. And that should do it. Okay. Um, I'll give you a moment. Why don't you go ahead and do all those things? Um, get rid of the person, uh, rename it, put it into your, your Google Drive, and then set the, um, the scale to metric. All right, let's get started drawing our keychain. Uh, let's see here. We've gone over most of the tools over here, um, and we set our our scale over here. So we're all set to go, really. Uh, let's go to our rectangle, and starting from the origin, you might you have to use that control key. Just click and release it, and notice how it changes from one mode to another. There's two modes there. That's the one we want click and, and release the mouse button. Start dragging the mouse to the right and upper so it starts it. And we want one that is 90 millimeters, comma, 30. So this, the base is gonna be 90, comma, 30, enter. And kind of zoomed out right now, but that doesn't mean it's wrong. If we go to the, this, um, the orbit tool, the, the zoom extent there, if I didn't say it previously, zoom extent shortcut um, is going to be a lot easier to use. It's shift, hold the shift key down and hit and release the Z and it'll zoom in. And then you can use your mouse wheel um, to zoom in out as you need. Okay, so 90 comma 30 enter. Why don't you go ahead and do that? Let's use our orbit tool to orbit down so we can and then use your mouse wheel and keep doing that until you get kind of close. We're going to be working with this top section here. Um, just a reminder also your orbit tool is here for sure but if you no matter where you are what tool you're in if you press the mouse wheel down and hold it down then it'll turn into this orbit tool which is kind of convenient. That's a shortcut. Okay. Uh, all right, well, before we do anything more, let's take our dimension tool, so the little tape measure, dimension, and let's just pull out one of these and make sure we've got 90 and make sure we have 30, 90 and 30. If it's not, then it's best to change it now, right? All right, once we're done with that, we'll take the tape measure and we're gonna make some guidelines to find the center of a hole that's what we're about to make here but let's take that tape measure and put it on this top line make sure it's not on the midpoint but someplace in between the midpoint and one of the corners you could do it here you could do it there click the mouse button hold and drag downward release the mouse button take your hand off the mouse and type in 15 half of 30 is 15 and I have that imaginary line then. We're gonna make a curve on this upper part here. And uh, let's see, where is that? All right, right there, right? There it is. No, that's not what I want. Oh, this is good. I want a two point arc, that one right there. So click on that. And I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more so I can see this because notice how I, when I put my cursor over the intersection of my guideline and the object line, I get an X. I'll click when I see that X. I'll come over here. I'm not clicking, but I'm, I'm hovering over the top of that side. And then I'm going to drag this cursor along this right here. Well, no, I do need to click. So I need to click and then I drag it along here. Now this is the really uh, most important part right here is making sure that you click when you see that little blue globe looking thing. Okay. There we go. All right, why don't you do that then? We'll pause it right here. And go ahead and, and make your guideline and your half circle. All right, let's draw a hole for the keychain. Let's come back to, to here and go to the circle. 
And I, I'm not exactly sure where the center is, uh, so I'll line it up and just hover over there and there and notice how the circle or the center of the circle comes in then. All right, and then I click in the center, release the mouse button and, and drag the mouse, take my hand off the mouse. And I think we're gonna use five millimeters. If that's the radius, by the way, and not the diameter, five enter. And there we go, right? All right. Um, you can pause here right now, but I think I'm going to continue on and do a couple things really quickly. I'm going to use my eraser tool, and I'm going to click on the outside here and drag, holding the mouse key across this to get rid of those, and then I'll do the same for that. If you have problems with this, sometimes when you didn't connect this, to that top line, you have problems. You do have to get rid of all those lines up there. So if you have problems, let out a yell and the teacher will be around. Let's use our select tool and click in the center of this circle. Use the delete on the keyboard. And yeah, we're looking good. Well, let's pause right here and get all those things done. All right, let's put a little depth to this using our push-pull. Click and start dragging upward, hands off, type in three, enter for three millimeters, and now we have um, an object that is three millimeters in, in depth. Okay, let's, do, let's use a new tool now. We'll go back to that push-pull and use what's called a, an offset. And I think sometimes it's best just to show you this. Notice when I put the cursor over the surface, it turns to dots. If I click, hold, and drag inward, I get a parallel line that is offset from that outside line and surface. I'll, I'll take my hand off the mouse and I'll type in two for two millimeters, enter, two millimeters, enter. I could do the same thing to this outer circle too. And if I put the cursor right on that circle and click and start dragging, I'll type in two again, enter, and look what we got going, right? Why don't you go ahead and try that? There's a lot of little steps, aren't there? I hope you're doing good. Okay, let's go on to the next step. Let's go back to our push-pull. And let's raise this, this part and this part up. Uh, 1.5, so click, hold, and drag upward. 1.5, enter. And again, this one, start dragging it up, hands off the mouse, 1.5, enter. And why don't you go ahead and do that? All right, now comes the fun part, putting text in. This is not a big keychain. Maybe five, six, seven letters, one line. That's the most you, you'll get and it, it'll look good. Let's go to our 3D text tool. Uh, let's see, where is it? Oh, there it is, by the circle right down there, 3D text. So you enter your text here, and let me go, I'll put smile in mine. You can change your font here. There's not too much to choose from. You can make it bold or regular. Height is probably gonna be, I don't know, it might be 150 or so, you, you don't want that. Uh, put it down to five, and the text extrusion, put it down to five. And then you could, you could um, work with that. I'll show you that in a second. So I print, I press OK. There it is. And set it. Oh, it's too small, right? OK. Let's go to our Move tool down here. We're going to choose the scale. No, watch what happens when I click on this. I got all these little handles in. Just go ahead and play. They all do slightly different things. You'll figure this out. You know, just manipulate it so that it is, it is big enough to to put in here. Now here's another thing you should know about is back in this is the move tool and then you can move it um, and line it up to the inside of that section there. Use your move tool then and your scale to a tool to get it how you want it to be and then um, come back to the to the movie. Let's take a look at this text. Make sure that it fills up this whole space because then it'll show up better on a 3D printer. 
And you'll want to like zoom in and zoom out and make sure that it's as centered as you possibly can by using that, that move tool. The next step is to, is to you're going to be moving this and melting it, if you will, into this surface here. Because otherwise, when it gets printed, they're not really sitting on that surface and they'll, they'll fall off. So you kind of kind of have to melt them together. Best to immediately go to your select tool and right click and say unglue. Now it may already be unglued, but um, it's, they're kind of, you know, this won't work unless you unglue it. Now I'll go back into this, into my move function, move tool, and I will click and hold and drag downward. See how it kind of kind of melted into it? And that's what you want to do. It's a little tricky. Sometimes you have to uh, move it around a little bit. But when you see it kind of melt into that top, top surface, then you've done it correctly. You also want to manipulate it and go to the back and make sure the text didn't come through the back. If it did, control Z, undo it so that, and then try it again. It might take a little bit for you to do, but it has to get done that way. If you need help, let out a yell. I think you're pretty much done if you've gotten to this point. Uh, you, you could ask the teacher to come over me and see if it's okay. Um, just make sure that on the bottom you don't see text, okay? And then uh, let's see here, make sure it's saved. And then we need this in what's called an STL, STL format. It's what the 3D printer looks for. And this is a SKP. If you turn this file in, we can't print it. I have to have that STL. Here's how you do it. Click on the folder, go to export, go to STL. It's going to download though, and it's on the left hand side. It's the bad part about this all. You have to get this file turned into your, to your Google assignment, okay? And really there's no easy way to do that. Um, other than maybe going to showing where it is in the folder. And like before, and you've done this before, is go to my documents and then downloads. So you, you could go to your drive and you could go to the folder that you created for these file for these files. There's my Google SketchUp. And I then could go new file upload and then find your downloads folder. There it is. Oops. And date modified. The last one that I that I made must be this one. Yeah, I guess it is. There's the STL, right? I think I did it twice. But in any case, there's that STL, and that's the one that you upload. And of course, this is the file that you want to turn into your Google assignment because I can't take an S I can't take an SKP file or a Google SketchUp file and throw it over to the 3D printer. It won't even see it. It has to be the STL. Well, that does it. I hope that works. Let out a yell if you ever you need help, and uh, I think it'll be okay. All right, smile often.